Dana is probably not happy tonight, and I'm, I wasn't happy about two months ago, but Dana and I have crossed paths. We joke about it kind of in the off season. The games that we've had against each other have been just like this. Um, I remember my days at Missouri State when he was at Creighton. I remember my days at New Mexico when he was at Creighton. We played each other. Uh, probably played him more than any other guy. And I told him before the game, I said, I love watching your team more than I do playing against your team. That's how much respect I have for him. But, uh, you know, to get a win this way, I'm just so proud of my team. You know, we've talked about trust all year long, and we just continue to trust our guys. We didn't really get in a great flow uh, in the first half. Um, it was probably – uh, arguably Zoe's toughest 20 minutes uh, to start the game and then maybe one of his better 20 minutes after halftime. That's how special he is. And um, just really proud of the guys. We fought we're down 19 to an elite team like this uh, and come back, find a way to win. Uh, it's a pretty special night. You started this by saying, wow, how many times did you say that as you were watching Lonzo Ball? Well, it's not just Lonzo. Um, obviously, Lonzo is extremely special, but – this is a team that uh, we feed off everybody. You know, I, I you know, I, I think what, you know, Tommy Welsh, 12 and 8, EK, I thought, came off the bench and was huge for us. I thought uh, what Aaron did um, throughout the game and then what Aaron, Aaron had to make the big free throws to get us to that point. Um, I thought Bryce really helped us uh, keep us in the, uh, within striking distance with what he did in the first half. So, you know, TJ, TJ missed some shots he normally makes, but just did a heck of a job. I, I think the thing I'm most proud of Lonzo is what he did defensively when we made the switch uh, and put Lonzo on Brooks. Uh, we made it a little bit harder for Brooks in the second half. But you know, certain guys get a lot of attention. But you know, the, the, a game like this, when you're down 19, and, and Zoe would be the first to tell you, um, you got to have help. And our guys did a great job helping each other tonight. Steve, uh, along those same lines with Lonzo defensively, did he ask to switch on to Brooks, or did you? No, see we've done it. We've we've done it periodically in the first game, um, but uh, so it was something we we were really thinking about going into this game. And obviously, he's a an elite player, and he made some phenomenal plays and phenomenal shots. But uh, pretty much after the first four minutes of the second half, uh, we pretty much made that switch, and and Zoe was on him, you know, most of the half from there. Steve went. Along with uh, Ball and Brooks, what else went into the defensive effort? And also, if you could elaborate well, I just on think what it, it, did. Uh, I, I think we always end. talk about confidence. And usually as a player, and I've tried to harp on these guys all year about this, most players, um, confidence comes in, am I making shots? And it's from an offensive standpoint. And all we've done all year is make shots. You know, I mean, this was an, a very, very good team, an elite team with elite defense, you know, we're in the 80s again and we shoot 51% from the field again. You know, so we've done that all year. And I've just tried to tell them, you've got to build that same confidence at the defensive end. And it's not easy, especially when they throw 48 out, out at you to start the, the game. And then to start the second half, I think they scored 11 in three minutes. We called timeout. And I remember just writing on the board, I'm like, guys, we played three minutes. They just scored 11. We're going to give up 70. You know, uh, you know, this is embarrassing, you know, and for whatever reason, you know, they just – they got it – they strung together a couple stops. And I will say this, our crowd was tremendous. I, I thought it was flip-flop. I thought uh, Oregon had their fans behind them when we had our lead in Eugene uh, in late December, and their fans had a lot to do with them getting back in it and winning it. And I thought our fans tonight were terrific. I mean, I, in my four years, Paulie hadn't sounded like that. that that's been the best environment that uh, one of my teams have had a chance to play in, and we're very appreciative. It, it, the students have been terrific all year, um, and I thought they were great getting the energy in the building today. So when Lonzo pulls up for like a 35-foot contested step-back jumper like that, is there still a part of you that goes like, no, no, no? No, I yes. did that. I've recruited him for so long. I did that probably three years ago, um, not being his coach, wondering, what are you doing? <laughs> But I've watched him make that, and the timing of when he makes it is – and it's not like he was making a lot of shots in the first half. So, it's just who Zoe is. Zoe figures out how to win games. That's what makes him a special point guard. He's obviously got size, athleticism, but people don't talk enough about his basketball IQ of just his feel. And that's a feel for him, you know. And I've never once told him, you know, and I don't want like five straight from 35 uh, yet. But if he makes the first four, I might. Um, 
but he's just got that feel, and I trust him. And I, I think we, we as a team started building that trust in our Australia trip, uh, and it's just been building ever since. Uh, there was never any panic on our sideline. There wasn't panic in our huddles um, or at halftime. It was just about trying to get us to do the things that we needed to do. And our defense, we held them 33% in the second half. We rebounded well. Uh, I just thought we did a lot of good things defensively in that last 16 minutes. Yeah, what did this game? Te- what did you learn about your team this game? Seems like this is the first time you've won a game like this all year. What did it tell you? Well, about we've team? We, well, we've won. You know, winning at Kentucky and doing the things that we've done all year have been really special. We we had a slugfest with Michigan here. We beat Ohio State on a on a neutral floor when they were playing pretty well. Um, but in league play, to get this win, uh, I hope we can. I thought we start building some momentum uh, when we were on the Washington trip defensively. Um, because I thought that was the best two games we've defended. And we came back here and we got a little shell-shocked because they started so fast. Uh, they made everything. And it wasn't just one guy. You know, they had maybe six or seven guys at halftime that were within a basket of being in double figures. So it wasn't just one guy that was hurting us. It was almost across the board. And so that can kind of be deflating. And so that's what I'm most proud. And if I learned anything, how I can – continue to trust these guys, especially at that end. Um, we had everything going wrong, down 19 in the first half, have to call a timeout to start the second half because we're down 14 or 15, uh, and we find a way to get back in it and win it. And then we got back in it because of our defense. And it's probably maybe one of the first games all year where I can say it was really our defense more than it was our offense that got us a win tonight. You said there was no panic, but at, at halftime, you've given up 48 points. What's kind of the message there? Well, it wasn't panic, but it was a very stern message. There's, there's a difference. I wasn't panicked in the locker room, but it was a very stern message on you, you can't do this, and you can't do this against elite teams, and if we want to be an elite team, you, you've got to respond. Uh, and it wasn't – we didn't talk about adjustments. We talked about we just played 20 minutes, and we weren't doing what we were supposed to do. You know, it wasn't our principles defensively. Um, and in the second half, after the first three-minute game, um, we really, I think, i got to watch the tape, but we were much more active. We got stops. Uh, you know, we beat this team eight on the backboard. Um, that doesn't happen to this team very much. So, you know, and I thought they played well. You know, they, they got three turnovers on the game. So, it was a physical game. It was a slugfest. Um, but it was really about just being principled and disciplined in what we wanted to do, and I thought our guys did that in the second half. Uh, Thomas, the last time you guys had seen Oregon had a double-double tonight with 12-8. and eight. For him to have such good games against a team like this that has as much collective length as it does, I mean, how kind of important is that for you guys to build? Well, he's up? huge for us, and I thought the center spot tonight, I both, um, you know, I thought both Thomas and EK, I thought EK was about as active as I've seen him. Three blocks, nine points, seven rebounds. You know, we got a lot out of that center position tonight, and that was huge for us. So, wasn't able to get Gigi going in the second half. I, I didn't. I ended up staying with TJ for that entire second half, which normally we don't do. Uh, but he had some foul trouble in the first half, and the, the media timeouts in this game were so long that we just decided as a staff to roll with TJ. And so it wasn't anything Gigi didn't do. But I thought our bigs up front really battled. We challenged shots at the rim. Uh, and then Thomas is a load at the other end because he's different. You got to guard. You think know, you got to guard him in the post, but you got to guard him out on the floor because he can stretch it a. 17 feet, and if you let him shoot it from 15 feet, he's he's dang near automatic. So it's a that's a good weapon to have. Yes.